our high school sweethearts and um, and I would say best friends and soulmates and um, we are parents of a four-year-old named Wesley and um, we are pregnant and due in two months and very excited about the baby coming. And I think one of the things that is so hard is that we live in a, a very fast-paced world and very high-tech world um, and uh, to try to kind of slow that world down a little bit and, and live in a little bit low-tech, more simplicity. We try to do as much as we can. Sometimes hard, but it, at the same time, we, we're moving forward to try to have more simplistic, more clean life, more decluttered life. I just didn't know any other way, so I would go to the, you know, a mainstream toy store and just get, you know, all these colorful toys. And I could even tell how I felt around these toys and just I felt overly stimulated. You know, color is a great thing, but too much of it can be overly stimulating, I think, for just a young, you know, a baby or a young child. Um, I think that there's other toys that could be more educational for him, um, creating more purposeful play. These really ob things that should be obvious or not, and because I think we live in an adult world and we think as adults. And another thing that um, was really helpful that Lorena had suggested was putting um, hangers at his size in the mud room and where you know he's putting on his boots, have a little chair that's his size, and you know he can take something from the hanger, coat rack, and then put on his boots. I've been able to create a space on a level that um, Wesley can reach. He's been able to take out plates and cups and set the table seamlessly. Um, and it's a fun activity. And we also bought a placemat which has an outline of where the plates go and the cups. So for him, it's a fun game of, I could see the, you know, how empowered he was and how good he felt afterward um, in being part of the family, contributing. And then in the morning, um, I've been putting a, you know, a banana or a carrot um, for his lunch. Um, I didn't even know that they had little choppers for children that were safe. And he created his own lunch and he ate it, you know, because he was involved. And also just another thing was a chair. Um, he was sitting in a chair that was kind of too big for him and I didn't think it was, but I realized the value of, having, of him being able to put his feet on the ground. That, you know, he's less squirmy or wiggly and he's more grounded. So we actually have a chair that's his size and, um, you know, he was doing his little work this morning and being involved and feeling purposeful. You always think that kids cannot do these things because you they can't reach things. So, and it's so obvious, yes, they can't reach them because the cabinets are about three times as big as they are. But when you put things in the area where the cabinets are their size, they can actually uh, receive instructions and by that just be able to grab them and get them. Upstairs, the bedroom, I was, that was something I was really stressing about is, you know, how am I going to, how are we going to put a baby in there with him and what's that going to look like with space? And it was amazing. He had a huge book rack, just a huge, you know, piece of furniture that had no use, taking up space, and we just transformed, you know, books, five books into a basket and facing him so he can choose tastefully which ones, which one he wants to read. He can see them and they're on the floor and it doesn't take up a lot of space. We thought we'd have to buy a bureau. We don't even need to buy a bureau. We were able to declutter and realize how we were able to use the space upstairs in a new way so that we can accommodate both children. And it, and it feels like there's so much space still. He chose where he wanted pictures. Um, another thing was in his bedroom, we had had pictures at our level, but he couldn't really see them, so now with the bunk bed, they're at his eye level. Yes, I'll talk a little bit about that. We actually went to um, a department store, and we uh, we chose a bed that was very useful for both him and, and the baby that's coming. The floor bed was a new concept for me. It's going to be interesting to try it out and see how it works, because it's very different than 
the approach that I had before with the baby being in the crib and you know needing this big crib and this big space. And we, we, he and I actually put it together. And now I'm noticing that because we've transformed the playroom into a space that works for him um, and things are at his eye level, there are toys that are engaging to him, he's spent more time in there, um, even without me. And it's not cluttered and it's purposeful and he's been using it and he's been enjoying it. There's an art easel in there that he's been using. You know, baskets have been really the key, um, really the key. We've put various baskets in the playroom, you know, puzzles, we've got rid of the boxes, and it's just a lot easier for him to do the puzzle, put it back, and um, see that things have a home and, um, and where things go. Also what uh, was really is really important to me is having a four-year-old these little things um, that he's learning now I feel like will really serve him later so to make a home environment that feels safe to him feels that he's contributing that it's not the philosophy of you know everything's done for him um, but he's a part of this he, he's a contributing member of this family and he has a lot to give and um, I think that that's also very self-esteem building. I think in general we, we're such consumers of, of so many things in, in life and we bring these things home thinking that we're going to use them one day and, uh, and we don't and so getting rid of things is great because it just kind of lines up your whole general lifestyle. But I, I really want for him to to take that from us and say, you know, my parents taught us simplicity and and the joy of nature and to be outside and to uh, learn from, you know, uh, nature in general. Um, I think that there's a lot to say from the simplicity of the things that we provide for our son and the education that we give him and the respect that we give him uh, he is very respectful to us and he knows his boundaries and he is a very very well behaved kid I would say. It's been amazing just even in subtle and also just obvious ways I've noticed in the shift in Wesley and also myself and just being less stressed um, we decluttered a lot of his toy. I would say like 75% of the toys that we had and I started thinking, oh my gosh, we're letting all these go or at least putting them down in the basement. But I'm noticing he's starting to play with a lot of these toys in new ways that he never really played with. Um, a lot of these wooden toys and blocks and thinking of new ways to play with them. So a lot of this is just me learning new ways of doing things and having a choice as to, you know, what we want to do and how we want to raise our child and, and children in an intentional way. This ultimately boils, boils down to how are we respecting our child? Um, how are we fostering independence? Is he been given a purpose? 